Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Brad Gabrielson from Lafarge, your board president, and it's great to see somewhat so many members that are here. You all know that we have a virtual format for today's meeting due to the social distancing measures from the COVID-19 pandemic. I think if we had this meeting a couple months later, we could do it in person. Our bylaws state that we need to have this meeting before the end of April, so there, um, so we were on online again as we were last year. Hopefully next year we can get together in person. As a couple of procedural things for this meeting, you can communicate with us by sending a chat message that is located, located at the bottom left of your screen. As a heads up, your message will be visible, and I repeat, will be visible to all attendees at this meeting. So please be professional and courteous about what you're putting online. You can also send a text message to our cell phone number at 608-632-0099. Once again, that text number is 608-632-0099. Zero zero nine nine. We will do our best to answer questions that come up at the end of each segment. So there might be a little bit of time lag with some stuff, so just be patient with us. With that said, I would like to call the 2021 annual meeting of the members of Vernon Communications Cooperative to order. There are over 50 members present online this exceeds a minimum number of 50 members and constitutes a quorum based on our bylaws of the cooperative. At this time, I would like to read the annual meeting notice that was distributed to, to the members this week of April 1st and published in local papers the week of April 1st. Annual meeting notice. Due to health concerns and government restrictions on COVID gatherings related to the worldwide coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and to the and to protect the health and safety of members of the annual meeting of Vernon Communications will be held on a virtual online platform. Voting by electronic means is permitted in the cooperative's bylaws and will take place during this meeting. The meeting will be held on Thursday, April 22nd 2021 at 1 p.m. Online pre-registration for this meeting is required. Registration instructions and voting credentials will be available on the cooperative's web website, www.vernoncom.coop after April 1, 2021. Information required for pre-registration will be the cooperative member's name, account number, an email address, optional contact information to provide at the time of pre-registration will be a telephone number. This is needed so updated meeting information can be forwarded to registrants if necessary. A little later on we will have the section, or excuse me, later on we'll have the election results for directors of District 4, Baroqua, District 5, DeSoto, District 6, Westby Rural, and Cashton. We will also recognize the 2021 Vernon Communications Cooperative Scholarship recipients. So the next item on the agenda will be the presentation of the minutes from the 2020 annual meeting by Rod Olson, our manager, who is substituting for Secretary and Treasurer Trudy Wall. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. <clears throat> uh, a copy of the minutes of the 2021 annual meeting is included in the annual meeting report that you could download off of our website. <clears throat> They're also displayed on the screen prior to the, uh, to the start of the meeting. And for those of you who did not download them, I can give you a minute to look at them to see if there's any change to be made. I <clears throat> would doubt there would be any. <clears throat> we'll give you just a second. Um, 
At this time, I would like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. It looks like we have a motion and we would need a second. And it looks like we have a second. Uh, you will see a pop-up come on your screen to vote for approval of the minutes. And you should be seeing that now. So if you could please uh, vote for yes or no for those. <clears throat> okay, we're seeing some votes coming in now. <clears throat> Okay, and I guess we're we're seeing uh, um, we are seeing the uh, minutes approved. Um, <clears throat> the motion is carried, and the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting are approved. So I guess I'll hand it back over to Brad for his opening remarks. Thanks, Rod. Um, this is the second year that <clears throat> that we are holding this meeting online instead of in person. I hope they're only a few more months away from putting this pandemic in the rearview mirror. For the health and safety of our staff and members during this COVID-19 pandemic, we again fail, felt that it was better to hold this meeting in this way than to delay or cancel it. Besides, it gives you a, a second look at one of the products, Paragon, which we have a stake in through a partial ownership in a company called Communications Management Co-op. That's Communications Management Co-op. We had a little timing issue last year, but have worked, out, worked it all out for this meeting. In the last 12 months, the pandemic made us adjust how we do business, but we did not miss a beat. We did close our office to the public for a couple of months, but we're open after Memorial Day. Our staff did a great job adjusting to the new safety measures and remote working was only used for emergency purposes. Enough can, cannot be said for our technicians. The one thing that kept America going was reliability of communication services. Offices and classrooms, moved to home settings and everyone was shutting down and isolating in fear and our staff had to stay in the game and and keep up with the installs upgrades and trouble tickets we had schools and state agencies mandate services to be installed in homes without broadband there is there was no option to say no and our staff did what was needed even though the danger was unknown at that time the, co uh, the cooperative hit several milestones last year. We surpassed 8,000 members. We surpassed 96% fiber optics to every co-op member and should be done this summer. We doubled last year's capital credit and paid out $1.5 million in capital credits. There again, $1.5 million in capital credits at the time when our members needed it most. We recently received our latest broadband expansion grant that will complete the fiber overbuild of Frontier Communications Viroqua serving area. Financially, we had the best year ever. And with that said, our board is pleased that the cooperative staff and I would like to personally thank them for stepping up and doing what was needed to keep all our members going during this uncertain and unsafe time. Thanks again to our management and our employees for doing a, a fantastic job of making us successful. I'll now call on Scott Hawkinson, our controller for his financial report. Thanks, Brad. All 
right, I would like to present the financial statements for Vernon Communications Co-op for the year 2020. Our balance sheet, uh, the total assets at the end of the year, $43,721,607. Our total liabilities, $21,096,784, or $784, excuse me. Our total equity, $22 million. <laughs> $624,823. Our total liabilities and equity equal the assets at $43,721,607. And that's a 3.8% increase over last year's numbers. Just a couple of highlights on the balance sheet. Um, this slide indicates the uh, amount of efforts we put into building fiber to all of our members. And again, in 2020, we buried over 82 miles worth of fiber optic cable within our serving area. And as Brad mentioned, we, we returned a lot of patronage money. In our annual retirement in October alone, we returned $1.4 million via 5,300 checks to our members. The average member received approximately $233 in October. Um, the difference between this and the 1.5 Brad mentioned was the estate retirements throughout the year was over $164,000. So we're returning the money to our members. Next, the uh, income statement. Total revenues, 17 million. $465,568. Our total expenses were $14,729,494. And our net margins for the year 2020, $4,081,050. A very, very good year. With that, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I'd be willing to take. <clears throat> we can go back to the okay. Some come up. Seeing none at the moment, we can always re rework our way back. But at this point, I would need a motion to accept the financial report for 2020. Seeing that we have a motion, I'd like to ask for a second. And we have a second. You will see a box pop up on your screen to vote on the approval of the financial report from the 2020 annual meeting. Please use your mouse and select either yes or no to cast your vote. It appears the votes are coming in, and it looks like we have a full full approval from our members. With that, the motion is carried, and the financial report is approved. I believe Rod is on the agenda for the next item. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> okay, well, thanks, Scott. That was a great, uh, uh, great financial report, and uh, it was was quite a year last year. <clears throat> Before we um, I'll go on to the operations report. And um, so I've got a uh, um, few things, you know, a few things to say about the corona coronavirus. <clears throat> you know, we reported last year a little bit about how we, um, you know, had quite a time and whatnot. Uh, <clears throat> but we were first last year pretty new into the, uh, the whole uh, pandemic. But, uh, you know, throughout the year um, from then until now, 
I think we've really handled things pretty well. And, um, you know, one thing is to, you know, hats off to our employees. Um, you know, Brad, Brad mentioned uh, the employees and whatnot and <clears throat> what they had to do. But, you know, there's a couple things went on that were probably a little bit different for us than there were for uh, some other companies is that as soon as the mandate came out to shut down, shelter in place, close your businesses and whatnot, we got orders to do and mandated to do broadband installs in, uh, in a lot of different places. We had to do uh, broadband installs for uh, students that didn't have uh, uh, broadband. And I'll touch on some of these a little later, some of the things we did. But anyway, we, we didn't really have a, uh, uh, an opportunity to say, no, we can't do anything because we, uh, we were given orders to go out and do stuff. <clears throat> um, we also had tons of new orders that came in from uh, members that all of a sudden they were working from home and they maybe didn't have a, um, <clears throat> didn't have broadband or maybe their computers weren't up to snuff, their Wi-Fi in their home. So we, we just had a ton of, ton of orders. Um, <clears throat> that was on the IR staff. Um, and they're the ones, the front lines that were in people's, people's homes when everybody else was, uh, was at home sheltered in place. You know, we had to be up and, uh, and doing stuff. Our network operations center, we call our NOC, you know, they actually had a huge network upgrade that we had to do <clears throat> with everybody at home, on the internet, using it for their businesses, whatnot. We had a, a huge upgrade we had to do. We had to upgrade equipment, we had to upgrade uh, bandwidth, and all this was not planned. Um, some of it might've been planned, but it was for later in the year or even into 2021 when we were gonna do it. But we had to cr crash that stuff through uh, early last summer uh, to get that done. And so hats off for them. We had a lot of calls for computer repair. People all of a sudden they're working from home. They have a laptop, maybe it's an old laptop and they actually had to, we had to fix those things and upgrade and do stuff so that they actually could work from home. So, um, you know, we just had a lot of calls from customers and whatnot and the CSRs, um, you know, a lot of businesses are still closed. <clears throat> we did close for a little bit, but, uh, we're not, not for very long. Um, we were generally open uh, by Memorial Day last year. Um, so we had barriers for our CSRs. They had to come up with uh, um, procedures and whatnot to take in equipment, to distribute equipment uh, to members, whether it be set-top boxes, modems, those type of things. And they just did a wonderful job on that. And, and, and then we had to deal with uh, two offices at that time, keeping them open along with all the staffing things that, that come out of the pandemic, people being sick, are they, are they quarantined at home? Are they, they test positive, they not test positive. So we had a lot to deal with <clears throat> and the staff really, really did well. Basically we got busier when, uh, when everything else was shutting down. So we tried to keep things as normal as possible, you know, with our staff and meetings and whatnot. So you know, I think we did, we did okay. And uh, I don't think our members missed a beat. And uh, in that time, <clears throat> we, also, we also grew a little bit. Uh, we have two new employees, uh, Jason Landrath and Kevin Karwaski. Um, they're both uh, locating cable for us. They both started last, uh, last year and are uh, doing a great job. We get hundreds of cable locates and we used to contract that out. Now we're doing that in-house with our own staff. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we thought, well, we'll create a couple of local jobs, new jobs. So when people were losing their jobs and being laid off and whatnot, a lot of businesses, we were adding staff. Um, but with that said, you also come a time when we have some retired employees. And I want to thank these two gentlemen. Um, I wish they, I wish we were in person where we had a crowd. I can get them up front. Everybody can clap for them and whatnot. But uh, Jim Hansen and Steve Luke. <clears throat> um, Jim, he started in, uh, in August of 2005, so he's been here almost 16 years. Jim is our structured uh, business structured wiring expert. He's, he's the one that uh, has taught the rest of our employees how to, how to do structured wiring in large organizations, large buildings, you know, places like the hospital and uh, uh, new buildings and stuff that are going up large business. Um, <clears throat> Jim's the guy that, that does that. 
Um, he also had some many, many years in the industry before starting here. And the other gentleman, Steve Luke, Steve, Steve's an old telephone man. He is uh, um, steady as a rock. Steve started here in, in uh, January of 1992. So he's been here over 29 years. Um, he also worked somewhere before he came here as well. So, but he's our expert on our central office switching, our voice switching and whatnot. Um, our other staff, they're, they're working with Steve, trying to learn and pick things out of his brain that he's acquired over the last 30 years. And um, a lot of the legacy equipment, um, he's the one that, uh, that we count on. So we'll miss them both. And uh, we'll miss them both as coworkers and also the vast knowledge that they, uh, that they brought us here. So um, we did see some other changes. We have the Vernon Tech Center. Uh, late last fall, we did shut down our Viroqua office. Um, some of that come out of a couple different reasons. Uh, one of it being, um, you know, the coronavirus, you know, had, uh, had something to do with it. Walk-in traffic was a lot lower. But we decided that we really needed to get back to our core business, which is we're a networking company. And um, uh, our, our job is to get, get circuits and whatnot to people's homes. We thought that we could do you know, a lot of IT services and whatnot, but our network is so vast and so complicated. It just really took, took all hands on deck to do that. And uh, we were getting sidelined by a lot of things that really was taken away from that. So <clears throat> we did decide to shut our Roco office down, but in that same kind of time frame, uh, we also formed a partnership with Scott Liam and Liam Technology and, and his staff. So we're a, it's a joint venture between Liam Tech, Tech and uh, Vernon Communications. They're back in our building. We changed the sign a little bit and uh, his staff is picking up the things that we were that were bogging us down <clears throat> that, so we can concentrate on our network. Uh, the computer repair, um, a lot of the um, IT services for businesses, they're getting spun up on that. Selling computers, uh, Wi-Fi systems, you know, uh, peripheral uh, things, cords and whatnot that people need. It's just better to do it through there than, than through our cooperative. And uh, I think they're finding out they're they're pretty busy. It's a it's a, a great facility. It's a great company, and Scott and his crew are really doing a, a great job, um, and uh, taking that business and growing it and running with it. And uh, we see a lot of success out of out of Scott and, and his group. That quite frankly we couldn't pull off on our on our own because of all the other things we had going. So so they can specialize on the things that they do the best. And we can go back to networking and doing the things that we do best. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that came from closing the business is we we did bring all of our staff back to Westby. And that was important because it was really hard to, to uh, have two different locations, especially during the coronavirus when we were short staffed at times or somebody was out. Yeah, still have to keep the doors open because we did decide to stay open through all the whole thing. Say like Oli said, never missing a beat. So it was it was a little tough. It was time, and I think we're we're going to be better now, and and the community is going to be served better for that. <clears throat> Along with that, um, we did have a lot of uh, you know continuing to do a lot of sponsorships. Uh, we put a lot of money into in the organizations as they need it. Um, you know, we had dirt track races at SNS. We had Bethel Home Walks. Our, our employees still uh, uh, worked on that. Uh, we never did, uh, never really did shut those things down. And like I, I'll touch on um, uh, before, some of the other things is, you know, we right away when things shut down, we put in 35 internet accounts for students. Um, we put in Wi-Fi in nine communities for people to use in case they did not have broadband at home. We donated masks, you know, in our communities. Uh, we put six thousand dollars into local food pantries. We kind of completed our um, our our, our um, green space here in Westby. Um, it's called Feliskop Square, which means community square in Norwegian. So that's getting finished up. <clears throat> um, we tried to support our local businesses and, and restaurants by bringing in lunches and whatnot for employees, so that we could 
you know, support uh, local restaurants that couldn't be open but had carry out services. Um, <clears throat> like I say, we had a virtual meeting last year. We live screened, live streamed events, um, quite a few of those. We started up, uh, we gave $250 to several individuals uh, that were needy at the time. And then uh, at the same time, we had more applications than we had planned on. So employees stepped up and kicked in money of their own to finish that out so nobody went without. Uh, the Chaseburg Soul Burner, we did quite a bit for them to help promote that thing. Uh, donated 1,000 notebooks to stuff the bus. I mean, it could go on and on, but you know, the Beth Holmes social distancing uh, walk, whatnot. <clears throat> and then, you know, the Eagles Cancer Telethon were always part of that. So we never missed supporting anything that was continuing to go on. And, uh, um, you know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with the, uh, the staff and how, how they handled all this along the way. Um, they just, they just never, never missed a beat. And uh, uh, it was, it was great. <clears throat> Last year also, we, um, we did receive two more grants for broadband expansion grants from the Public Service Commission. Uh, the first one that's up there is, is finishing out the complete frontier communications of Viroqua um, serving area. So that'll be done probably next year. So when you look at, if you can see the little blue map there, that is actually used to be Viroqua Telephone Company, which was sold to Frontier Communications. <clears throat> we completely surround them, you know, Westby in the north, Reedstown on the south, Farge on the on the east and uh you know Genoa de Soto on the on the um west side. So but that project, this last grant is a eight hundred and seventy eight thousand dollar project. We got a forty five percent grant on that. Um It'll add 144 more locations and will be about 41 um, miles of cable that we're gonna be putting in. The other grant is way down on the uh, uh, southwest corner of our um, subscribing area <clears throat> below DeSoto. And this is actually part of the village of, of Ferryville, but not, not the lower part. This would be up on the, uh, up on the hill in Eagle Mountain. Uh, there's a housing addition up there. It's beautiful places too along the river, but uh, that's a $352,850 project. We got a 49% grant to do that. And right now, currently there's 66 homes up there, but I think the housing addition is around that 135, 140 units up there. <clears throat> It'll be just about 12 miles of cable. So we did a grant to do that, get a grant to do that. And like I say, that'll be probably next year as well. <clears throat> Um, this year's fiber construction, <clears throat> we're going to be finishing up all of our, it's the ILEC area. We have, you know, kind of two sides of our property. We have the ILEC, the incumbent local exchange carrier, that's Vernon Communications. And then the CLEC, which is a competitive local exchange carrier, which we also are, which would be the Frontier area in Viroqua, Cashton, and then <clears throat> it will include down Ferryville too. Uh, we'll be completing up all, all of last year's grant that we got hopefully by this um, late this summer so um, we're we'll finishing that up and then we'll also be finishing up all of our ILEC customers we have a goal of trying to get by mid-summer having everybody fiber done possibly as many of them cut over to fiber as we can uh, by mid-summer we're going to be calling on people that uh, are on copper now we have fiber there to get them cut over and so hopefully we're, we're going to get all that done <clears throat> this year. So we'll be pretty aggressive. Uh, last year was an aggressive year as well during the pandemic, but we, you know, we completed the city of Westby last year and, and uh, some other areas. So uh, never missed the beat. Uh, this map here, it actually shows, this will be our complete serving area. And on this, the green is already done in fiber. Okay. You'll see, you'll see uh, frontier communications in the middle. Uh, with some pink and some blue in it. The blue is going to be done this year. And then the pink is is slated. That's our last uh, broadband grant that uh, <clears throat> we just got that we'll do next year. And you'll see Fairville way down in the in the lower left corner. So uh, pretty exciting to uh, to get that done. And like Brad announced, you know, we went over 8,000 subscribers. 
I think when uh, I'm estimating that when we get these grant areas done, uh, the cooperative is probably going to uh, we'll probably probably top out at that 8,500, 8,600 subscribers. And uh, just a few years ago, we were at about 5,500 subscribers. And uh, <clears throat> so this next uh, next box here really has uh, our subscriber and our service accounts. It, the graphs look kind of flat, <clears throat> but um, because there hasn't been a whole lot of movement on there, but um, you know, for our members, last year we gained. 586 members. I shouldn't say that's last year, that's January until just last week. Um, so it's current, it's not as the end of the year. Um, in our Vernon Communications, the ILEC area, we gained 286. And in this, the competitive area, the Viroqua Frontier Cashton area, uh, we gained 300. So 586 total subs we, we added to the cooperative last year. And, and hopefully by the end of next year, there'll be another 500 subs. On our services, we are seeing a little decrease in a few things. Our broadband, which are <clears throat> basically our internet, our broadband services, uh, we're up about 700 subs. Uh, we've seen a little bit of telephone line loss, 159, and 103 television lines going down. So our subscriptions are still doing well. Although we are seeing some net decreases, even with all the subs that we are adding, but broadband is our main, um, our main, main concern, main uh, uh, control on for the cooperatives. So that is really all I have for um, the uh, operations report. Jana, have we gotten any questions or anything in yet for either Scott or I? No. Nope, so we have no questions on that. So with that, um, I'm gonna move into the director elections. So uh, yesterday we did count the ballots for, um, uh, we had three elections. We had elections in District 4, which is Viroqua, our competitive area. Um, and we had, uh, that's District 4, District 5 in DeSoto and District 6, which is Westby Rural, not the city of Westby, but the rural area of Westby, and also includes Cashton. So <clears throat> in those uh, uh, elections, ballots had to be in by 10 o'clock yesterday morning, and we counted the ballots yesterday afternoon. Uh, they were counted by uh, Marty Snustead and Emily Call, uh, members of the cooperative, but not, not employees of, uh, of Vernon Communications. Um, they were in and uh, counted them yesterday. And so in the election for District 4, uh, the candidates were Jean Carey, Rachel Hansen, and Trudy Wallen. In District 5, it was Miles Bolin and Tom Fisco. And in District 6, Westby, the candidates, there were five, <clears throat> Kyle Bacham, Mark Cade, Cheryl Day, Marty Stensling, and Annette Wedwick. And uh, in each of those District 4, there are 2,057 um, voters, uh, 571 returned their votes. District, I should have done this along the way, but uh, District 5, 756 members, 210 uh, returned their votes. Both of those it, it's, are exactly 28 point. 27.8% return. So we're getting a little bit, we're less than a third of the ballots returned. And then Westby, we had 1,314 members, 357 returned, which was 27%. So pretty consistent ballot returning on those. And the results of the election um, were in, um, <clears throat> yeah, District 4 in Brokwa, Trudy Wallen. She was the incumbent. She did uh, win re-election to the board. In uh, District 5, DeSoto, uh, Miles Bolin uh, was elected. He is the incumbent, so he's returning to the board. And in District uh, 6, which is Westby Rural and Cashton, uh, Marty Stensling, uh, he is the incumbent. He also uh, is returning to the board. So um, <clears throat> with that, I will need a motion um, to approve the, uh, the director election report. And so I would need a motion on that. Oh, 
Okay, and a second on that. And you should see a pop-up coming on that. <clears throat> and so please vote uh, yes or no as to whether to approve the uh, ballot report um, as tabulated by Marty Snewstead and Emily Call. And we'll wait for the uh, votes to come in. God, we do have a question on here. Okay. It says, will you be doing any speed upgrades in 2021? Okay. Um, the question was whether we're going to do any speed upgrades in 2021. Uh, we are going to be staying. Our base package is 25 meg symmetrical, 25 meg up, 25 meg down. That is kind of standard in our industry. Um, as of right now, we are not not looking at making our base package 50 meg or anything. Um, we are gonna probably stay at 25 for the time being. And part of that has to do with, we wanna make sure that all of our, um, all of our members are connected to fiber before we do that, because we don't wanna leave anybody behind. Um, and hopefully that's done by this summer and that'll be a board decision. Um, you have to realize that when, when we do an upgrade like that, we are taking a revenue hit on on that. And it, it probably, to just make 50 meg our base package, you know, we're probably talking many thousands of dollars a month in revenue on a yearly basis. That is, uh, that, that does hit us pretty good in the financials. Plus the other thing it does, it also puts a lot of stress on our network. It's not just, you know, as soon as everybody's using more bandwidth, our network has to be able to handle it. So it's not a, it's not a billing thing. It's not a uh, uh, really just a board decision that this is what we want to do. It comes down to technology. And quite frankly, we need to get everybody on fiber. <clears throat> and then we have to assess the network on that as well. Um, one thing that we did do um, in our doing is, for instance, the same type of thing. We're going through... Uh, um, changing, going to be eliminating the, uh, the high definition fee that we have for high definition television and everybody will be getting high def television and uh, everybody should be getting cut over that as we get the fiber done as well. But, you know, when you look at something like that, that will take, oh, I think it's, with eleven or eleven or twelve thousand dollars a month, you know, you had that times twelve months. That's a that's a lot of money revenue hit. Our expenses stay the same, so we we have to be very calculated on this stuff, and that also puts some stress on the network as well. So hopefully, I've answered that question and added another example of of some of the things we are doing other than bandwidth. Are there any other questions? Okay, so we do have the results of the uh, of the uh, ballot. Uh, um, report and it has has passed um, not, it's overwhelmingly in favor so um, that uh, that report is approved and uh, so now I guess I'd like to turn it over to Jana Pedretti and Jana is going to introduce our scholarship winners for uh, 2021. Good afternoon. At this time, I'm going to read off the 2021 scholarship winners. Every student will receive $750 after they complete their first semester of college. So I will read their names off and the school that they represent. First, Grace Hebel from Westby and Tamara Hendrickson from Kickapoo. Jonah Jepson from Westby Ellen Johnson from Westby. Katrina Kappa from Viroqua and Natalie Marin from Lafarge. Mara Mathis from Viola and Alyssa Myers from Cashton. Amalia Montgomery from Kickapoo and Isabella Nedlin from Westby. Joseph Rafel from Westby and Audrey Wirtz from Lafarge. 
Congratulations to these 12 students. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you, Jana, and congratulations to uh, everybody that got the, uh, the scholarships this year. Um, uh, I'm sure they're all very well deserving, and uh, uh, hopefully, these scholarships help uh, help people further their education, and then also come back to this area and and uh, become uh, uh, leaders in our community. So, good luck to these uh, those young people. <clears throat> Now, I guess I would um, call for um, any old or new business in the meeting. And uh, again, if you can just send a message uh, either way, um, we will try to address those. And we will give you just a few minutes. So there might be a little bit of a, a dead space here. Okay, anybody, we'll give everybody a chance to, to get those in. Should have a little music playing or something. <laughs> Don't sing, Ron. I won't sing. <laughs> Don't sing. No. <laughs> okay. Are we seeing anything? And have we gotten all the other questions that have come in so far? Yeah. Okay. I guess we don't have any uh, uh, <clears throat> older new business. If anything comes in in the next few seconds, we'll we'll certainly get to it. But. Um, uh, I would like to thank everybody for attending this meeting. Um, it's our second and hopefully our last virtual meeting. You know, I hope you uh, got something out of it and um, uh, can see that the cooperative is doing well. Uh, we're very strong. We, uh, we also put a lot into it this year to uh, <clears throat> get through this coronavirus time. Um, we're not out of the woods yet. This summer will still be a little bit uh, sketchy with that, but we're um, rest assured that we're going to do the best we can to keep things as normal as possible. Um, I know for all the people that are working from home and children that are studying from home, it is not at all normal for them. <clears throat> but we are trying to take as much of the uh, uh, confusion or any 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 anything that that we can do to help is is our main concern because we want. We want everybody to adapt to these times the best they can for um, uh, for this crazy time that we're in. And hopefully, this is the long, the last one. Um, <clears throat> we will. We do know who is registered for the uh, the annual meeting, and uh, we do have a, a something for you for participating in the meeting, as we do every annual meeting. We um, will be contacting you along the way to to get that to you. Um, <clears throat> And so with that, I would need a motion to adjourn the 2021 annual meeting. Seeing a motion yet? Okay, and a second on that. And with that, the pop-up should come up to vote to adjourn this annual meeting and uh, the next annual meeting will be in the spring of next uh, of 2022, and hopefully we are all together in a, in, a, in a central place where we can bring stuff to you and we can uh, uh, have more of a presentation and a little bit more interaction and uh, give our employees a little, uh, little recognition that they needed. I wish everybody could have been here. Um, so I could introduce them. I want to thank the new employees for coming and working with us. And I also want to thank uh, Steve and Jim for the many years of uh, service that they gave to the cooperative. Uh, between those, those times, uh, it's, there's been a lot, a lot of water under the bridge for those, especially, you know, guys like Steve, when things go bad, they don't go bad during the day. They go bad at night. And Steve is the one that's usually got to get out of bed and go do something. And uh, so I want to thank Steve, and I hope he's listening. And uh, both of them are re retiring at the end of this week. Jim, Jim is leaving. Um, uh, Friday is his last day. Next. Oh, Friday. I'm sorry. Next week. I'm sorry. April Excuse 30th. me. April um, 30th. 30th. And uh, Steve is May 1st, so they're just two days, of, you know, one weekend apart. So, um, so we got one more week to. Uh, 
pick their brains. So, and I see that we do have enough uh, enough votes to adjourn the meeting. And I would thank everybody for attending. And like I say, we'll be getting in touch with you to get your uh, uh, gift for participating in the meeting. So thank you very much.